went on behind the leading cars. It is Stefan Sarazan from Nick Manassian, from John Martin, from Frank Mayer, 44, 38, 25, and 23. So the leading car, that must have been Alex Brundelen who had to take the avoiding action. He's dropped all the way down to 19th position. Alex Brundle was one of the cars that went right to the left as they went into Village Corner on the first lap, John, uh, beyond the limits of the circuit. But yeah, he uh, was he was avoiding the spinning Dumbreck. That was right. uh, that was the car that we saw in uh, in the GTE categories. Uh, Ricard Leeds from Paul Leeds, Jimmy Bruni from James Walker. So those two have swapped around, but Leeds still leads in Arm. Stuart Hall from Paul Leeds, Chochi, who's at one place ahead of Paolo Roberti, so 98, 61 and 88 in Arp, 77, 51 and 66 in Pro. There is Ricard Leitz in the blue car that we're watching on the screen at the loop with you now, Paul. Yes, and uh, James Rossiter has joined in now in the Lotus number 32, the car that you said started from the pit lane. He uh, didn't come out straight away, but he has now joined in on the third lap of the race, so uh, he's going to have a long afternoon ahead of him. Leaders going through the Beckett's S's on their third lap, still with Lotterer uh, two seconds ahead of Alexander Wurtz in the Toyota, Tom Christensen a further two seconds behind in the Audi R18 Ultra, the non-hybrid car. So watching the battle for third position between Aston Martin Racing number 97 with Darren Turner on board. He's looking at the black and yellow hind quarters as they go across the old start finish line and into cops of the GMW Ferrari now heading up the slight incline towards the Maggots Beckett's complex and there's barely a GTE car's length between them as they sweep through in this battle for third position plenty of curb being taken by Darren but in fairness ahead of him the 66 car James Walker is tracing a Slightly tighter line between the curves. Now under the hangar straight, and the Aston Martin seems to have the power over the Ferrari. He's dragging up to the back, pushes out to driver's right. Will Darren get him on the brakes? He may just be able to do that as he turns in and, yes, makes that position. So, so track limits at turn number nine being reported to the race director uh, for one of the cars out there. I didn't catch that. He's cops. So we'll try and find out who that was for 99. 99, yeah. the uh, uh, Andrew Howard in the GTE Am Aston. What a first uh, seven or eight minutes, Paul. I, I'm sort of just about getting my breath. You forget, <laughs> don't you? I mean, I got all Le Mans emotional almost before the start of, not almost, actually did before the start of the race. Great crowd, great atmosphere. But you don't get the breathing space before the back past you again as you Absolutely. do with Le Mans. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, and it was noticeable here. There's been a steady throng of spectators walking past the box. About five minutes before, there was no more spectators walking past. They were all stuck in the grandstands. In GT, E, we've got Ricard Leitz leading in the Ferrari, in the Porsche, but only just ahead of Jimmy Broomey. They're down uh, in the uh, Luffield loop at the moment, and uh, Leitz is less than a second ahead of Jimmy Bruni in the Ferrari number 51. That's 77 and 51 leading the GTE Pro class. Into the battle at the head of that GTE Pro category is starting to look very interesting indeed. The blue Felbermeyer car, two-tone blue and black. A uh, bit of yellow on that as well, and the Tricolore, he's uh, a short car drive away from his own bed and his base performance simulator business across at Banbury, which I've visited lately, and I'm sure he's had pl logged plenty of laps in reality and virtual reality around this circuit. As Alex Wurtz is coming through that battle now, and behind him is the 44 leader in the P2 category. So we've got GTE Pro, P1 and P2 leaders all on the national straight, the national start-finish straight at the same time. And I'm looking back to see if there's a GTE AM leader there as well. It can't be that far away. Well, Paul, we're just on the hour mark. How do you rate the first hour of this race? The... Toyota guys in particular haven't played fair for you because you've not been able to really assess them given that it appears 
that having taken a nearly few full fuel load some what five or six laps easily earlier than we expected to them they seem to have started that car without using a full fuel load well i i I hope they started without using a full fuel load and I hope that their next stint is going to be longer but it did just occur to me that maybe they do have high fuel consumption um, and they are uh, remember running this rear wing now or the, sorry the uh, rear wheel arches which make it look as though they've got a wider rear wing that is going to make it uh, give it more downforce that is going to mean that it takes more energy to drive the car through the uh, through the air so they may actually have a fuel consumption problem um, we'll see what happens uh, as the race unfolds so that for me is going to be interesting see how the Toyota's fuel consumption uh, is going to pan out over uh, well, we've only got five hours to go um, but that's going to be one key thing uh, the other significant thing that we've learned is that the Toyota is quicker than the two Audis whether it's uh, hybrid R18 e-tron quattro or whether it's the R non-hybrid R18 ultra uh, both numbers one and two cannot keep up with the Toyota certainly when Alexander Wurz is driving it and uh, I wouldn't necessarily expect that either Nicola Lapierre or Kazu Nakajima are going to be any slower so certainly in terms of the three works cars at the sharp end the business end of this race uh, Toyota seem to have the pace advantage question mark what's their fuel consumption uh, just very quickly before we go down the GTE battle in the pits with Nick, uh, if you're just catching up, the 32 started from the pits because they'd had another engine change and that car uh, therefore missed the pit exit time and therefore has got to start uh, after the start of the race uh, for not being on the grid and having the, I presume actually it's for the engine change. There's a, there's a rule about engine changes uh, on the morning of the race so they may actually have had that car ready but they would still have had to start from the pits. Uh, Nick Damon, we've got the GTE Pro leaders in the pits and very quick service. They came in, they changed drivers, they changed tires, and they actually came off the jacks at exactly the same time, which does mean the Feldmeyer team were a fraction faster than the Aston Martins. They came in nose and tail, they've left with a slightly bigger uh, split between them, but again, that battle's gonna go straight back out. We've also now had both, one of the amateurs have got the 99 car, we've had the, eight, we've had the, uh, the Cron car, so right in the meat now of the changes because people we've not seen is we've not seen the Ferraris because their big advantage is the better fuel consumption they can get out of those four five eights. Yeah, that's a very good point. Roger Davies at the sub box racer tweets to at Radio Le Mans. The cheer that went up in the grandstand when the Toyota took the lead reminded me of the Pianos leading at Le Mans in 2000. There is a great atmosphere here at Silverstone and if you're not here you really have missed out this weekend. Uh, this is I, I was really moved at the start of the race at the uh, amount of people that were in the new grandstands on the international start finish straight. With just over an hour gone, Alex Wurtz leads by 12.2 seconds to Andrea Lotterer, seven from one, Toyota from Audi. The two hybrids then leading out from Tom Christensen, who's dropped some uh, 24 seconds back from the leader. Neil Yarny is just a lap off the lead now, so the leading three works cars. Are the only cars on the lead lap? Yes, they are. Johnny Kane is 2.6 seconds behind Yarny. That's a great battle for the private here on us. In P2, Stefan Sarazen in the 44 Star Works car, that's the one with the Venezuelan flag on the fin, is the head of the ADR Delta 25 by some nine seconds and another 11, 12 seconds back to Pierre Caffa, who's now up into third in the Pecom racing car ahead of Frank Mayer. Pit stops have just thrown them around a bit and it seems that Nick Manassian has lost out. He was right up there, the 38 side next drop way back. Uh, Jimmy Bruni currently shown as leading GTE Pro for Ferrari by some 23 seconds, but remember, he is yet to stop. James Walker also yet to stop in the 66 Dunlop shod JMW yellow and black striped car. And Andrea Bertolini makes it a 1 2 3 for Ferrari in the 71 AF Corsa Pro car. But all of those cars have yet to stop. Leading GTM, Ferrari. Are you getting a pattern here? The FBI would call this a clue, I think. <laughs> Ferrari, 61 of Marco Ciocci in the pits in the 61. Ferrari will give up his third place to the 99 Aston Martin. A Paul White. Is our leader? Say Nick. It's the leader in the pits. Oh, thank you. Yes, it is. Ben Trellewey. And it's uh, going to be a fuel-only stop. They, uh, again, have the prepared tyres. 
They are actually behind Reinhold Yost at the moment, so the, the tyres and his hair colour exactly matched. Um, fuel going in. Can't I can't see any... Uh, okay, there's a little bit of, of damage on the, on, the, on the very left rear where it, uh, it clouded Tracy Cron. So it's, got a, it's just kind of scuffed it. It's got the old-fashioned the old scuffage from that, in, that incident. Uh, he's now releasing up and away, so it'd be interesting to see whether there's going to be any action taken on that or just a slap on the wrist, but that was a, uh, certainly the definition of a textbook stop. Bugs of fuel instead of off and away again. So, uh, Ben Trelloway will lose the lead uh, despite a textbook stop. Uh, 56 litres put in the car, 54 seconds lost in, or not lost in the pit lane, spent in the pit lane, so... Uh, 54 seconds is exactly the same time uh, as that car spent in the pits in the first pit stop when uh, Andre Lotterer got a tank full of fuel uh, and he got uh, 54 litres instead of 56. As I say, slightly less fuel with the car having been out during the safety car. Listen to the hybrid spinning up there on Ben Trellier as he was braking. It's 45 seconds between Nakajima and Trellier out on the circuit. Trelluay coming round past the national pits. I had to, had to wait there to make sure I was right. I re, honestly, I, I am really, it's, I, I'm never this lost normally. It was like uh, yesterday when people keep talking about yellow flag at turn six. Yeah. I can't even visualise that because to me, cops would be turn one. If cops was turn one, then I can kind of make it work. But turn six would be Brooklyn's, you know. I, so through the traffic goes uh, Ben Trelluet. But he's not very far behind the Toyota, having come out of the uh, pit lane. I, I was right in saying that he's lost the lead, yep. uh, but he's not far behind, John. He's about half a second behind. That Is caption, it as little as that? That caption that I've just seen was uh, obviously taken at when the guys went across the line uh, beforehand, and that was clearly the wrong amount of time because he has got Nakajima almost there's a lock here now can he live with him and he's on his this is his first uh, flying lap across the line and no action after investigation for car 88 says the purple line at the bottom now car one will be the next decision from the stewards and he at the moment is just a second or so behind the leader of the race and this is very interesting indeed 1.4 seconds at the line it was on board again with Trelluere that's the noise of the Audi through Woodcut the diesel engine and in the pit lane the leader of P2 Nick Dearman Yes, and more interestingly also, that the, the, the uh, 77 Feld Meyer Porsche has just been released of its jack, so they've, uh, they've obviously fixed what it was. It was uh, so it must have popped or slightly snapped and replaced whatever it is. But the ADR car, the Andropping Racing Machine, which is the, which is the big, big gainer from the, that... Uh, pit Additional, uh, in terms of time, in terms of laps, the Aston came in on lap 91. The Ferrari is on its 100... And, well, it's at the end of its 105th lap. Uh, it's just, yeah, 106 laps for the Ferrari. And uh, a completely standard stop there. We know that that's, yeah, in fact, the JMW Ferrari leaves in front of him. So I see the JMW Ferrari is just under a lap behind, is it? So that is remarkable in a, in a, in a class like this to end up with a, with a five or six lap a, a stint difference. Yes, it's 30 as opposed to 36 laps on the stint for the... Uh, Ferrari, the Ferrari doing 36 laps, the Aston doing 30. But in a sense, you've got a similar situation in the lead of the race with the uh, Toyota doing 23 or 24 laps and the Audi doing uh, 28. Yeah, it's come, it's all, it is very surprising to see such big differences. I mean, Toyota's obviously just gone for a full rich concept. Let's just go and see how fast we can go and just burn the fuel. But in what should be a, you know, a, a balanced series of restrictors to keep the power the same, so they're all producing similar overall performance. To get five or I, six laps more is just remarkable, really, isn't it? I, mean, I, don't know it, I, I think it might be to do with aerodynamics, to be honest, Nick. Mm. I mean, you're, you're 
possibly more technically minded than I am, but uh, the, the amount of aerodynamic downforce that you apply uh, may not give you an overall different lap time that much, but what it does do is to really massively ramp up the fuel consumption. Well, let's see if we can find out someone might know. Uh, Jimmy Bruni, um, why is your car so much more economical than the Aston Martins and the Porsche? Uh, it's all about drivers. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think uh, we are, me and Giancarlo, we uh, we did a lot of testing to concentrate to just burn less fuel. We are uh, using less fuel than also the other Ferrari. So it's uh, it's something that we've been working all winter, and uh, and now it's uh, it's the good it's the good work it's paying. Uh, I mean, is it a bit frustrating in the cockpit that you're having to save fuel from from the for the first moment of the race? I mean, obviously at the end you get your reward, but for the first hour it must be a bit frustrating, isn't it? It's uh, this is the great part of the endurance race. This is uh, endurance race. Now it's all about speed, concentration, consistent, and uh, using less fuel. Are you doing a brilliant job? Thank you, Jimmy. It's an interesting uh, tweet. Thanks, Nick. Down in the pub by Nissan pit lane, as his car goes out. Uh, Andreas Paccio says Toyota, by his calculations, have done their extra stop and 21 seconds behind. They have got a half decent chance here by his calculations, and I'm throwing this to you. And, and Andrea says, uh, same number of pit stops left as the lead Audi. Paul's brain goes uh, I time. don't think so. Okay. Uh, I think that there's the same number of pit stops, possibly, but the, out, the final Audi stop will be massively shorter. Well, I'm waiting for Paul to say it. And a hello to Dan Reagan, who's listening to us from the Dominican Republic. Delayed flight. See, sometimes delayed flights are good. You might get, well, well, hope it's not another two hours and 14 minutes before the end of the race. So, coming down to just two hours and 14 minutes to go then. Fisichella, Ferrari, Turner, Aston, Ferrari, Johnny Cocker. Is how it was at the end of the last lap. That will the change, of course, when we go back next time around. The number one Audi, by my calculation, John, will need three. Here at the wing, there's another gaggle of prototypes. The G-Drive sponsored 26 car is the car that we're looking at at the moment with Panciatici at the wheel. And he comes around the, well, it's effectively a double right now at club, back onto the international start-finish straight. He's up behind the Gulf Racing Coupe. That is pretty much flat, even for a P2 car there, isn't it? Through that first two corners, then down. One, two, three gears. Turns into the right-hander and sets himself up for what is probably a first, certainly nothing higher than a second gear hairpin. Snatch third. Take a bit of curb onto the Wellington Straight as you exit. In three, he's getting all temperamental behind the Gulf car because he can't get through. The hands off the steering wheel, he's waving around into Brooklyn. Any second now, Panciatici's going to make a silly move. You can see the almost see the pressure gauge rising there as into the pits has come the uh, 31 Lotus Lola, Christian Albers at the wheel of that car. We've also got uh, the two Audis circulating very r rapidly nose to tail, and at the moment they've got no traffic to worry about. I uh, just wonder whether Tom Christensen might fancy his chances of getting his lap back, um, because of course it's important for him in order to get back on terms uh, with Alexander Wurtz in the Toyota, who He's is exactly a minute ahead of him. A minute up the road, that's right, and that gap is actually going up as well because Wurtz is lapping fastest of anybody on the circuit he's not uh, as fast as uh, Lapierre went earlier on in the race but he is uh, lapping uh, faster than anybody else on the circuit at the moment he's just coming into the loop at the moment um, and it may well be as I say Tom Christensen unlaps himself uh, the advantage that the number one car has, Marcel Fessler has, is uh, kind of every which way you look at it, because um, it'll be the Toyota coming into the pits first for its next pit stop, uh, so he'll be able to stay out a little bit longer. 
uh, and that safety car will have added just a little bit of slow running to the race that I think they might actually be able to get to the flag now with just one more pit stop. Um, it'll, it, it was going to be close, but with that extra bit of slow running behind the safety car, it might have just dealt the Audi Team Yerst uh, car another trump because, as I say, that might just shorten the race a little bit uh, and allow them to get to the flag uh, without making that extra fuel stop. Great battle going on between Sam Hancock and Pierre Caffert uh, in the P2 category. And here are the two Audis absolutely together, as Paul was describing, as they come on to the Wellington Strait. And on board with Tom Christensen, a little bit of... Uh, Rubber debris has rubbed the windscreen there. Down at the braking for Brooklyn's got nowhere near the e-tron car going down the straight, but under braking closes in significantly. And I still think there's a lot of uh, work to be done on understanding how you can use the regen braking. As that battle between Sam Hancock and oh, Sam gets caught up behind the Ferrari and has to try to go around the outside. And Pierre Caffer, uh, Olivier Pla, excuse me. Uh, managed to make the right choice. Sam rather hung himself out there on the outside of the corner. The Ferrari did what the heavy GT car had to do and drifted away from the apex. Sam very sensibly got off the power, but has given up the position to Pierre Caffer, to Olivier Pla. I'll get it right in a moment, sorry. It's late in the race. Oh, Sam will not be happy about that and expect that uh, Jota Zytek to really be pushing on. Nick Damon, all quiet in the pits at the moment. It's very, very quiet, actually. It's a, it's, I, don't, I think the, a few people brought their stops forward or, uh, or accelerated off that safety car, and now we are waiting as everyone is trying to get... ...head of Tom Christensen in the Audi. So Toyota second, Christensen third, but 11.6, uh, 11.567 uh, seconds separating the two with 26 minutes remaining. Alex Wirtz trying very, very hard indeed as he goes up the inside of one of the uh, P2 challenges there, out of the final corner. Uh, some time ago, Paul, you might remember, with about 2 hours and 14 minutes to go, I said, I really hope this chap who's listening on his, waiting for his delayed flight from yeah. the West Indies uh, doesn't get to hear the end of the race. He says, bad news, flight aboarded during takeoff. Good news, back at the gate, can listen to the rest of Silverstone. <laughs> Glass half full for Jason Owens. Thank you, Jason for that uh, and here's a, a question for quick discussion as we're getting down to the uh, important part of the race um, why is the 458 not as dominant in the American Le Mans series as it is here today which is a good question to shall, be honest because shall, shall I ask a, a Ferrari driver well the thing is they've got even more performance breaks in the States than they have here so why don't you ask a F Ferrari driver than Nick Johnny Cocker um, the Ferrari is showing a, a tremendous turn of speed, a tremendous advantage, which for some reason it doesn't always show around the world. Is there any, any idea why it's so suited to European tracks? Uh, I mean, I was just having that discussion with the team manager there, Tim Sugden. I said it's the first racing car I've ever driven where you almost forget what you're doing. The car just works, no problem. Engine feels perfect every lap, brakes, no problem. The Dunlop tyres are working fantastically. I think it's just the whole package just works together so nicely. Uh, and, and that's where you see and that's where the results come from. It's tense each sector every single lap for six hours. Now, of course, you've driven in the US for a couple of years, both in the prototypes and in, uh, in GT cars. I mean, is there something about the type of track here or just how the 458 is developed that makes it seem to be working much better in these European series and World Series than it does in the American series? Yeah, I think the, the Ferrari is very strong in high-speed corners. I know for myself, um, the American circuits tend to be a bit shorter, bumpier, slower uh, corners generally. And I think that kind of plays into the hands of the, the more mechanical grip cars like the Porsche and the Aston Martin. Um, once you come to a circuit like Silverstone or Spa or anything, you know, Le Mans, any of the big, long, flowing, smooth tracks, the car just comes into its own. So the aero really starts to work and, and everything just, you know, just works really. So I think that's probably where it is really. The engine as well, you know, it's, it's all kind of, you know, it's not like the Porsche and the Aston where it's a load of torque, low down and then tapers off. This is all near the top and it's all about carrying speed and momentum and, and it's, it's just a different driving experience really, so. One you're enjoying in uh, 
I know you've got three minutes to go, but I, I take it you're rather chuffed with the potential second place then. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, we, we've arrived here as the newbies, if you like, and um, I think we've raised a few eyebrows, and that's all we could have hoped for. And, you know, Jimmy and Giancarlo are uh, no, no, uh, no mean feat to kind of be those guys, so we're happy to come second to those. And um, let's see what happens. Yeah, we've still got 20 minutes left, and uh, it just shows that like, anybody can have a problem. So we're just, uh, fingers crossed. Johnny, thank you very much. And that's your answer, I think. Uh, yes. Or one of the answers, perhaps. Yeah, I, I, I'm not certain it's one thing. Uh, Pete Marchman says, uh, as we're looking at towards the end of the race, surely the story of today is Toyota and what uh, marching forward can mean for them. And please, can we have four more WEC rounds like this? Can't disagree with that. It, it has been a very good run by Toyota. That's not to take anything away from Audi, and it's certainly this is not over yet. The gap is 15.8 15 .8 seconds between Vert and Christensen for second, lapping almost to the 10th last time around but again must make the point that these guys were not expecting to be the competition for Audi even at this stage of the season and uh, just running one car there's obviously disadvantages in terms of how uh, how many bullets you have in the gun how much data you collect uh, Audi I'm sure are delighted to have some competition I think a little further down the road they will not be counting uh, their chickens at all certainly for as early as next season Paul because you've got to think that what Toyota have learned in such a short time and put into into action will stand them in cracking stead for the start uh, of next year. Uh, and the other thing it will do, I hate, I, I said, hopefully, uh, is to encourage the others. Yes. Because Toyota, by doing this, okay, they've got a good good facility in uh, in Cologne where the whole thing's been put together. It's not like they've just burst upon the scene with That's nothing. A fair I point, mean, they've yes. come with a great deal of preparation, even though they've only just started racing this year. But it does show what's possible. And if there would be uh, you know, other manufacturers out there looking for a way of promoting their brand and they're not doing very well in Formula One or they're not even in Formula One, they're not even in motorsport, then it shows that... You know. And that was it for that car. Uh, but it wasn't uh, that clear, I have to be honest. The last yellow helped us because it got us away with the last pit stop. Uh, it did not for Toyota and I think that was pretty... It was a very tight race. It was a very tight race, and we weren't that sure that we were going to win, I have to admit. They had a good race, a clean race, very good. Admittedly, they were quicker on the track, but uh, had less fuel mileage and uh, a little slower stops. And that was what helped us, plus the last yellow, we have to admit. But an interesting race. Thanks, Ralph. And once again, the emotion in the second language has uh, got the better of our interviewees. So, uh, uh, apologies for the language in that interview, but again, emotion was powering. And let's see if I can go, grab a quick word with uh, uh, Benoit Trollier. Benoit, congratulations. In the end, your uh, stop and go didn't make any difference. No, it was, uh, it was a pretty good race.